guys welcome back to my channel i'm your host Ms. kk and on this episode we are going to look at a quick video on understanding the relationship between interest rates and inflation in any given economy i was having a conversation with my friend sometimes last week and i was a bit confused for a second why is it the central banks or in our case bank of namibia finds it necessary to increase interest rate when things are already increasing in the economy i was for a second thinking the least they can do for us is actually lower lower the interest rates so that me and you have less have more money to spend meaning we are now still able to afford the things we were able to afford previously before the price increased then this actually just made uh, me realize that with fuel increasing with wheat related products increasing with sugar expected to be increased in the coming weeks a lot of things in the economy are going to continue increasing because think about it there's so many businesses that are depending on fuel to be able to transport their goods from the supplier to their retailer for me, me and you to be able to buy those goods so for example if you're a shop right and a truck used to cost you twelve thousand to come from south africa to deliver the goods here if not that if that if now that truck is going to cost you uh, 15,000 you need to pass on the increase in the prices to your consumer so not only the ones that are announced we are expecting prices to increase so we are expecting really literally everything across board to the extent it's impacted by fuel and interest rate to actually increase okay so to just start off here what really is inflation and so basically in layman's term inflation is the general increase in prices um, over the economy and it's calculated by economics over an index of goods and services so the economists would look at what is a general uh, when you go in the shop as a household what what are you likely to fill your trolley with when you are um, doing your monthly shopping then they try to find common goods across the general household that are deemed to be a fair representation of a household so let's just say for a hypothetical example every person that goes to the shop puts in white sugar puts in cooking oil puts in rice puts in brown bread in their in their shopping trolley those goods that i've mentioned then becomes the goods that are used to calculate that cpi index of any given economy what they will do is they will then they will then check that the price movement of those essential goods in the economy and then they will calculate what is now called the cpi index or inflation okay so if you want to find out what is in the Namibian basket, you can Google it. I'm sure Namibian economists have actually written one thing or two on the Namibian basket and what they are using to actually calculate inflation. If I find it, I might put it up here in the video. All right. So that is what inflation does. Okay. So now let's link uh, inflation to interest rates. I'm first going to use an example of let's assume you have a tax shop and you are the only tax shop owner in that area you are only able to sell five bread per week for example and there are seven households in that neighborhood so if you are only able to sell five bread and there are seven households in that neighborhood you have one of two choices you can sell your bread at your current prices and turn the other two households away and say sorry i can only afford uh, i can only sell five bread you are already sold that please come back next week or you can do one another thing and say hang on i'm the only person that sells bread here i'm going to increase my bread so that i can actually make more money out of that so now if you increase your bread let's say you were selling your bread previously at seven dollar and now you are selling you decided to sell your bread at ten dollars so what would happen is now let's just assume of the seven households because bread has actually gone up by um, three dollars only four of the seven households can afford now your bread is costing ten dollars and only four households can afford so the four households comes and they buy the four bread then you are left with the one bread so now you have one of two choices to make again you either discount your bread so that the other households that couldn't afford to buy the bread at um, a ten dollar can now obviously afford the bread or you sit with that bread and if you sit with that bread you actually incur the loss because now that bread can only have you know shelf life for limited days it rough it goes off then you then you you dispose it off then you actually incur a loss so basically that's how your tax shop runs so keep this example at the back of your mind as we transition to the actual things that happens in the economy so you can look at inflation in a two perspective from you know the buyer um the demand and supply of goods and services in the economy or you can look at it from the banking side of the economy so let's now look at it from the demand and supply of goods and services in the economy so what happens is if inflation is high 
the central banks is actually there's too much money in the economy what they will do is they will increase interest rates so that means let's say me and you that have a home loan a car loan a personal loan are now exposed to this increased interest rates and because of this adjustment that is made by the bank of namibia each household let's just say for argument's sake has now hundred dollar less to spend so if i used to take home um ten thousand now after this hundred dollar adjustment that the, the bank has made now i can only spend nine thousand nine hundred so that means there are certain things i used to buy that i can no longer able to afford because i have hundred less to spend so what would happen i go to the shop fill up my trolley but instead of me putting in um cheese and you know lettuce to come and make a sandwich i only put in cheese because we can eat the, the sandwich without the lettuce for example but we we compromising on that so that means now the shop that has the lettuce in the in their shelf they are gonna sit with that lettuce because no one can afford to buy lettuce anymore so what would happen to this they either discount the lettuce or they leave the lettuce to rot and then they actually incur the loss so you 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 see what happens so if they do if they discount the lettuce a lot of people can now afford the lettuce and they'll come back to afford the lettuce the problem with this is though the bank of namibia or the central bank they needed to do they need to do this adjustment at the right time and at the right speed so if they increase the interest rate too much what could happen okay it could mean that the the ten the household can no longer afford to um to buy the lettuce so now the shop owner sits with the lettuce the shop owner might not be able to afford to discount the lettuce because they also bought the, the the lettuce at a high price so if the shop owner can't afford to discount the lettuce or if they discount the lettuce and sell it at a loss at a loss the shop owner also have less money so what that what does the shop owner do the shop owner can decide hey i i'm also struggling i'm able to, i'm not able to recover my cost of the goods that i bought and i can't make the profit i'm generally used to making i'm therefore not going to be able to afford my, my 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 debt repayment i'm not going to be able to afford to pay my suppliers i'm not able to be able to afford to pay the same amount i used to pay on labor therefore i'm gonna lay off two of my workers in order for me to be able to afford keeping my business afloat so if the central bank does it too quickly or do it raises the interest rate too high it might hurt the economy so there's a balance between trying to control the inflation and also protecting the livelihood of the people because if business are shutting down employment is going up that that cycle will just continue going so basically that's the one way to look at why it's necessary for the bank of namibia to raise interest rate in order for them to be able to control uh, the price of goods and services in the economy the other thing is from a banking perspective where it has to do with the purchasing power of money let's say i get a home loan with a particular bank and let's say let's just say for argument's sake i'm granted this loan at a hundred dollar today at a hundred thousand today and by the time i pay it back i would have paid this bank a hundred and ten thousand the bank has calculated that by the time i pay the hundred and ten thousand bank they will be able to take my money and actually lend it to just say for argument's sake to easter and easter can be able to afford to buy a house with that 110 and the cycle can continue to can continue to go on but what happens then if there's inflation in the economy so if there's inflation in the economy things start to increase let's just say for argument's sake house housing prices are no longer 110 housing prices are now 150 so if nothing changes around the interest rate I continue to make my monthly installment at the, at the interest rate that the bank gave me the money. By the time I've paid back the money, they are now sitting with 110, but the 110 can no longer afford to buy a house. It's worthless. So that means the bank can no longer take this money and lend it out to Easter to go buy a house because now the house is 150. So to compensate for the fact that there's a loss in value of money because of, because of inflation increasing, the bank also needs to increase the interest rate in order for them to be able to retain the value of money. So what would happen in the real world is that we, the moment they see that in, inflation in, is increasing, the Bank of Namibia then does the interest rate adjustment. That means I now pay back at a higher interest rate. So instead of me getting to the end of my loan term and having paid back Bank A 110, by the time I pay back, I would have actually paid back Bank A 150. So that means Bank A can now take the 150 and lend it out to another person. That means they've been able to retain their purchasing power of money. And that is actually corrected by adjusting the interest rate. So those are the two two ways you can sort of try and understand 
why interest rate is likely to go up when inflation is high. The opposite is also happening. We, we saw it last year when Corona hit a lot of a lot of companies laid off their employees because they couldn't uh, either they were not considered essential services or they were affected by you know the lockdown in many countries. For example, the tourism sector wasn't actually getting customers, so the lodges were actually closing. So they were laying off people. That means in the general economy there isn't people with more money. So what happens now? If I am now unemployed at home and I can't make an income, the shops are now sitting there with a lot of goods and services that they can't sell. So what they tried to do to help the economy, they lowered the interest rate, meaning if they lowered the interest rate, me and you that, are, that still have income have more money to spend. And us having more money to spend, we take that, go to the shop, buy more goods from the shop at least the shop is making sales and because they are making a lot of sales they need to hire a temporary person to be able to to fulfill the demand and this, the economy started picking up again so that is how the central bank uses interest rates to to regulate the flow of money to regulate the economic activity in any given economy all right so then what do you do in amidst all of this things normally tend to get worse before they get better so we must first suffer eating toast without lettuce and cheese because the things are expensive while the corrective action is taking place so amidst that transitioning period of the economy correcting itself you need to make the necessary adjustment to make sure that you are actually is still in a good financial space on my q a thursday on instagram last week i ran a question on how what are people doing amidst all of this may they share their tips uh, one or two people responded a few, a few people were really shy to respond what they're actually doing and i actually shared what we did to actually respond to this last year when there was uncertainty with prices when there was uncertainty with actually um the job securities etc so do check out my instagram page do, do check out q and thursday q and a volume two you would find my tips there so really that's all i i had today i hope you now understand the relationship between interest rate and inflation and can actually make informed decision thank you so much please remember if you like this conversation subscribe to it on this channel we actually just engage in topics related to personal family and business finances and all we are hoping is that by the time you get to this end of the conversation you are better equipped to make sound financial decisions again thank you so much and it's goodbye